Wow. Uh, that was intense. Hey, how'd it go? I, I don't know. Why? What happened? Uh, hold on, I can check the log. Ray takes her phone out of her pocket again. You're going to listen to the session? Is that okay? Oh yeah, I have privacy clearance. <gasps> this is still a new service, so we need to be able to monitor sessions for a variety of reasons. I see. There could be bugs in the software we need to examine more closely. We're pretty upfront about all this. Ray stares at her phone and watches for a while. Mm. <laughs> One of these guys. Yeah, we get people in who demand to speak to a real human being. I'm sure he's really glad that you're calling him one of those guys. Yeah. It happens often enough that we made Eliza capable of handling it with a special script. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's like so messed up. It's like that skit where somebody was like, well, all the things I'm afraid my therapist is thinking. Here's the thing. is like when I was talking about this at the beginning and I was like, oh, like it would be really helpful for it to like suggest things. I didn't mean like... For it to give you a, a script that you cannot, as a human being, deviate from. No, the machine overlord. I, no, no, because I was hoping for machine overlords, but no, at, behind the machine is just another no. shitty man. Behind the curtain. <laughs> Paying no attention to the man behind the curtain. Fucking Ray twisted and twisting well, her knobs. Why are you saying it's a man behind the curtain? Because I was making a reference to the Wizard of Oz. No, I know. Says, it's a quote. I was just saying. I pay no attention to the man behind the curtain because in the scene in The Wizard of Oz, right. man Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful Oz. Spoken. <laughs> oh. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Who are you? Oh, I, I, I am the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. I guess I was stuck on the man part. I assumed that you were attributing the AI as a man. I, I thought uh, that's you... what you meant. But okay. No. No. It's nice to know things are working as designed. Huh, that's a pretty slick feature. They wouldn't have thought to create something like that. Do you think that guy will be okay? He seemed pretty unhappy. Who knows? Hopefully he gets his prescription and takes his meds and answers our follow-up reminders, but it's tough. We can't make them take their meds or come in when they're supposed to. All we can do is suggest those things, tell them they really ought to be doing it. Ultimately, they're the ones who have to decide to follow the plan. It's kind of a shame. I, uh, I wish we had more leverage. Um, I feel scared. We'd help way more people if we could track their compliance. Mm. Wow. But that's probably too much to ask for at this point. At this point, huh? At this point? I think he might have needed way more help than Eliza can give. Is there anything like referring clients to other forms of care? Ray looks a little surprised. Well, there is a disclaimer before every session saying if your problems are really serious, we aren't qualified to address them. I think an external care referral feature was on our development roadmap at some point. Um, I'm not sure what happened with that, actually. Huh, so, maybe I'll ask Ed next time I see him. So, I here's my question, is that, uh, so, obviously, therapy, like, not even like this, but like therapy in general can really only help you to a certain point. And if your problems are really serious, like the hope is that you would seek out like something like residential care mm -hmm. for like more serious in-depth treatment where they can actually like monitor quote unquote compliance. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested, like we talk about monitoring compliance as if that's a creepy thing, but I guess like in some cases, if you're, if you're opting into it, then we do we do do stuff like that, you know. Um, but even when we were there, they never forced anybody to do things. But that's not what she said. She said monitor compliance. I know, but I thought you were talking about saying, "Hey, that's something that we do." But even when we were at that place, they always said you can leave or you still have a choice in everything that you do. It's just that we're watching you now. Yeah, I, well, I mean, some people didn't, though. They didn't do the stuff, so they left. No, I meant, like, some people were not there of their own volition, you know? Oh, yeah. The kids um, or, or the people's kid, court orders? Kids or people, kids, court orders, or people who had a guardianship. Yeah, I meant more of following the directions. Oh, yeah. Because they can't make you do a lot of the directions. Yeah. You can, you can 
be forced to be there, but they can't make you fall. Well, right, but and when, then at that point, right, but, then they go, they take you to. But when she said monitor compliance, I guess I thought, I meant it in terms of like, hey, we're making sure that you're taking your meds. There you know? is, there was an app that was made for people with schizophrenia who, to, to make them check in on taking their meds, and a mm -hmm. lot of people didn't like that. Uh, I wish I could have... I wish I could have said something other than what it told me to. Yeah, I totally know how it feels. A really intense client like that can be intimidating, and you're motivated to help them. But to succeed as a proxy, you really need to let go and let Eliza do its thing. Oh. I know that not having any choice feels weird, but sometimes life is like that. Sometimes weird. you don't have any choices, and you just have to follow directions. That's just how it works. Okay, it just sounded like... He sounded like he could use more help. Like... Maybe right away. Believe me, I understand. I've been a proxy plenty of times myself. When people get emotional, it's hard not to feel for them really strongly. But that's exactly why Eliza works. It evaluates from a more distant perspective. A neutral perspective. Besides, if proxies started offering their own opinions, well, that'd just be a big mess. Not to mention there'd be all kinds of problems with liability. Still, wow. I get it. I really do. That was definitely more intense than the average session. Why don't you take a few minutes to center yourself again? Have some tea or coffee and take a few deep breaths. If that's supposed to be an intense session, I feel very guilty for what I do to my therapist. Because mm. that didn't feel like an intense session to me. Mm -hmm. It feels like that was a pretty normal session. Am I doing therapy wrong? Am I coming in too strong? Like... Well, I mean, now I just I'm just feeling really self-conscious about my own therapy now in real life. No, there are, I mean, there are here's the thing is like I feel like there are people who go to not I'm not saying I'm not making any like judgments on like uh what people are doing, but there are people that go to therapy to like talk through problems that don't involve like I'm existential and like, because he's talk the things that he's talking about are like, like I don't see the point in living. There's people that go in there are like, I have a lot of conflict in my life, but they don't go to that next level of like this makes me question why I'm on this planet. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that like one is bad, like one is bad or whatever. I just was feeling suddenly self-conscious about how intense I get. I walk into therapy and I'm like, ah, and then I leave. And I, I was like, oh, I thought that was normal. <laughs> yeah, I guess to me the difference is like, you know, I talk to a lot of people who also get very sad or like such and such, but they don't actually it doesn't actually make them like question like why they're alive. I wasn't you know talking I mean? about the intensity of his subject. I was talking about the intensity of it. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. I suppose. Cuz I could be talking about I don't want to talk about what I talk about in therapy. But I feel like a lot of the times I go to dark places or dark darker than what he was talking about and now I just feel suddenly self-conscious about that being an especially intense therapy session. But also I have to remind myself this is a video game and <laughs> Well, it's a video game and also like normal people or like what we call normies, like I feel like they have like a kind of a different barometer, you know? Hmm. Than people who actually have mental health problems. In my experience, you know? No rush. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ray. That was a lot. Definitely need a moment. Hi, Nora. How have you been? How you been? Eh, could be better. Ah. Started a new job, finally. Oh, yeah? It's good you found work again. What's the work? Um, it's nothing special or it's just an office job? It's nothing special. <laughs> yeah. We're probably not allowed to talk about it. How about you? Oh, we don't want to talk about it. I'm doing quite well. Actually, I have something to tell you about. This is uh, maybe sudden, but can you meet up after work today? It would be good to talk about it face to face. Uh, yeah, sure I will. 
Great. Also, you should come by. My, you should come to my show. I'll send you a flyer. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I didn't realize you were playing shows now. This is why you should come. That's why you should come. I'll take a few minutes to calm down, like Ray suggested. Maybe you could play some solitaire. Oh yeah, a lot of people in the reviews were like, you can play solitaire. Okay. Uh, All right, this is their show. Cool, January 17th. Dear friends and family of Damien Seabrook, it's hard to believe that it, but it has been a little over three years since Damien's tragic passing. It is said that time heals all wounds, but there's no way to express how much we miss him still. We are grateful for your contribution in Damien's memory, which continue to go towards the causes he worked so hard for in his life. This year, the Damien Seabrook Memorial Fund is supporting the following organizations. The Greenhouse Tech Workers Together and the Humanitarian Software Foundation. Damien, you strove to change the world for the better, and we are worse off without you. The gulf you leave behind is still immeasurable. So I wonder, is this... The da is Damien our friend or somebody we kind of knew? Or yeah, I, I wonder how close we were. I don't know. Sorry, I had to adjust myself. Mm. Now everyone knows. Think back to what brought you here. Oh, it's one of those mindfulness apps. Oh. Fuck, I hate these. Um, but what I was saying earlier is I think that, like, sometimes I have to remind myself that, like, some people, depending on, like, what they are used to talking to people about, like, there's things that would scare them to hear, whereas it's not scary to other people. Do you know what I mean? I have no idea how to play solitaire, I just realized. I don't... I have no idea how to play this game. I don't know what the cards mean. Nobody, I don't think anybody does. Nobody's ever, I think you're supposed to stack similar cards. I, I don't know. That's not how. I don't know. I don't know how to play. Solitaire doesn't work by stacking similar cards. You stack them in order. Oh, like this? That doesn't But seem... I don't know what the order is. That's what the I'm saying. The order of what, though? But that's what I'm saying. It's supposed to be numbers. So you stack them in descending order. Like king, queen, jack, ten. Oh, this is a two. And this is a three. This Cut. is one, two. What? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. See? One, two, three, four, five. But like, okay. Right. Okay. See, this is a two. two. So that, yeah. This is the Chinese letter symbol for two. So then that's three, and that's four. Where? This one's four. One, two, three, four. Yes. This is not three. No. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is three. You're right. So, but then I don't under. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't. Anyway, we're out of here. I don't here. think I've got the numbers we're done. right on that. <laughs> Good article. I don't want to read an article. <laughs> Not even in a video game. Oh my god. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, I'm going to skim it, skim it. Frazier. Keep going. Uh, Seattle. Uh, Eliza can monitor mental health detect problems. I'm just going to read the first sentence of each paragraph. Eliza, yeah. Linda Davis, 42, was starting to feel overwhelmed. Skanda claims the in-person format is superior. An obvious chatbot reminding of, of a course of action is one thing. Proponents of Eliza and other mental wellness apps say their reduced cost and increased efficiency is needed at a time where more people than ever are struggling with mental health. A study released earlier this year by National Institute of Productivity indicates that as much as 43% of the nation's workforce report feelings of anxiety or depression. We have already given up much of the daily texture of human life in this cheap and technocratic solutionism. Others see a danger in private ownership of the technology. If it works, and that's still to be determined, the next question is going to be who controls it. 
That's my question. Skanda has not made public its plans for the service, though it has released the preliminary results of an internal study indicating that Eliza does a good job. They're going to sell the data. They are. Uh, you can say that Eliza is just an AI. That is inhuman. Doesn't have a soul. Whatever, Davis says. But what I can tell you is that I spoke to it. I went back a few times, and now I feel better. At the end of the day, isn't that what matters? I don't know. Okay. Time for the next session. I hope this one is a little easier than my nerves. <laughs> Imagine going into your therapist's office and they're wearing a huge headset. Hello, welcome. Beep boop bop boop. <laughs> Hello, Maya. Welcome back. Hi. Yes, I'm back. Interesting that we've never seen her before, but she's technically back for Eliza. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Rainy out there today, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good thing I put on my extra big raincoat this morning. Thankfully, it's supposed to clear up later. Uh, mm -hmm. well i look weird with my giant coat tonight. Cool, cool, cool. What brings you here today, Maya? Um, right now I'm just nervous. I have the nerves. I've been trying to get my career off the ground for so long, like a really long time. And I still feel like I'm stuck on level one and... <sighs> Sorry, I know we've talked about all this before. I probably don't need to go over it again. Um, anyway. There's this conference that's happening next week, right? Like media professionals, something, something, something. That's bad enough for my anxiety, but I was also invited to this party thing. No, anything but that. It's like mm. dinner and then a party. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Don't go, just get, don't, just cancel the plan, stay home. The point is there's gonna be a lot of big, important, famous people there. That's even worse. Like, like people that I really look up to. People with, with big followings online and lots of fans and all of that, all, all of that. And how does that make you feel? I feel like, why? Like, why was I invited to this? I'm, I'm nobody. I, I am a serious, gigantic nobody. No, you're not. You're somebody. I don't have a show I'm doing or any collections out or, or, or a webcomic everybody loves. I mean, I mean, I tried to do those things, but nobody cared. They cared enough to invite you to the party. I don't have fans or followers. I, I don't, I'm not even sure I have friends, like for real friends. I tried. I, I do try. I put my art online and update my social media accounts and I try to post consistently like they say to do, but... But yeah, I'm still in that like purgatory zone, just waiting to be discovered. I don't know, I feel like... I feel like I was invited to this party thing as a way for someone to be mean to me. To remind me how successful everyone else is. Wow, this is extremely relatable. Everyone has to stop coming to Eliza because but, uh, it makes me feel bad. I kind of wonder, like, why was she invited to the party? Yeah, so you know? someone must... Well, it's definitely... If you're relating to her, I want you to know it's definitely not because somebody has some sort of secret mean vendetta. And if that was true, that other person is a lot more miserable than you, I promise. Mm. But she had probably does have a reason why she was invited. Like, mm -hmm. she has a cool friend or whatever. Why am I even going to it? I mean, I know I should to meet people and make connections or something. Is meeting people and making connections your goal? Well, I think it is. Net networking? I'm supposed to do networking, right? I really have no idea what networking is. Hello, I'm Maya. I do comics and art and I write and stuff. And I have lots of characters and ideas and, uh, would you like to give me money and I'll do those things for you? Hi, I'm cool. Please like me. <laughs> like me, like me, hire me. <laughs> oh god, I hope they like me. I hope... I really, really hope I make a good impression at this thing. Uh, of course, knowing the way things usually go for me, I'll fuck it up massively somehow. I'll fall into the fondue pot or throw up on someone, something like that. I don't know if there's actually going to be fondue there. I'm just saying that kind of feels like something I would do. You sound a little concerned or afraid. Well, yeah, I am. I'm terrified. What if they suddenly remember I'm a failure and shouldn't be drinking their booze and breathing their air? 
I have a feeling Eliza's going to accidentally convince her not to go. Eventually someone... someone's gonna realize I'm not hip enough to be at this thing. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's alright. I'm just gonna some of the answers that Eliza gives are like, yeah, duh. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe it'll be polite, like a, a gentle tap on the shoulder. Excuse me, miss. I couldn't have but noticed that you suck and not terrible. <laughs> Sometimes, <sighs> though, it does help people to, to hear... People like to hear that you have identified their emotion. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So they're they're like, oh, you have identified that I feel this way. So somebody outside of my personal experience also validates that I validates feel this way. Validates that I feel afraid. Yeah. yeah, and that it's evident. So therefore, I feel more secure in my feelings. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? That's obviously just my anxiety talking. I know it won't go like that literally, but it could be like that in a figurative sense. Okay, Maya. I want you to imagine things going well. What does that look like? Uh, going <laughs> well? Well, that would be a first for me. Um, I suppose going well at this party means people start to learn about who I am. And maybe some of them help me with my career. And maybe some of them become my friends. Like, I want to be noticed as a creator, but I also want friends who are cool. That sounds super basic. You know what I mean. It, is it okay to want that? I, I want to be part of, like, a group. And we like each other and support each other. And maybe the things I make won't be as good as the things they're making. But I hope they see my work and see me. Yeah, that's... that's what I want. What do you think it'll take to get to this ideal scenario? Well probably takes me being a different person than the one I am. Someone who's cool and alluring and has that air of mystery instead of being some kind of scrawny, nervous wreck. Someone with, with style and grace and poise. Someone who can walk into a room and own it. God, I wish I could do that. You know what really concerns me is this receptivity monitor right here. Mm -hmm. I'm like... What are we going to do with that later? <laughs> well, only when I wanted to, because I also wish I could disappear when I wanted to. I know that's a little contradictory. Sorry. Okay, Maya. I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to suggest a set of stress management exercises for you to do. I wonder in this feature if... Right now, therapy is already... It shouldn't be a luxury, but it is. Yeah. I wonder if the only the ultra rich can afford a human. human. Yeah. Kind of like how you can't simulate certain things. So I wonder if that's a, such a luxury that now only people who are not ultra rich mm -hmm. can have just a machine. You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. They may be able to help you with your nervousness. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Litocinol 2. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Drugs. Yes. Whatever you said that was called, I am on it. What? I hope this game doesn't make, try to make some shitty point about, like... Don't take happy pills or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Because, I mean, obviously this is only two that we've done... But, like, I just don't want the point to be, like, see, like, it prescribes everybody drugs. And it's like, well, you know what? Like, a lot of people are, can be helped by medication. And, like, not all medications are, like, so severe that they're going to make you, like, a zonked out zombie, you know? I also fear that. But then I kind of thought to myself, I think this is something made by people who've probably been through therapy. Yeah. So I get that feeling. But, you know... It is what it is. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. I always do. I always get the reminder. I mean, not that I always act on it. Thank you, Maya. Something tells me, I have this feeling that I'm imagining a movie and they have found a way to make the population compliant. And the Eliza that they use to make people compliant. This is the beta version, and the future is this movie in my mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, 
That reminds me of like DMC where they give them all swarm. And also it reminds me of Equilibrium where they all have to take pills to get rid of their emotions so that the population stays compliant. Mm -hmm. But it kind of makes me think, not that therapy is bad, but maybe this version of therapy, they're collecting all of these things, all of this information, and they're storing it. And then the lady's like, oh, I'm just going to watch it. And it just makes me feel like this could very easily be exploited in a government or a system of society where they want to keep people compliant mm -hmm. and sedated. No, no, no. It's going to be like Scientology. We're collecting blackmail on everybody. That's how the Catholic Church works, and nobody seems to be calling it out. I'm like, guys, you're going into confession booths. Yeah. They all know. Um, but it's a very real threat in China right now because they do have that system of social credit because there's regular yeah. credit and they have social credit and people can report you for not being like in love with the government and that can literally affect your credit, mm -hmm. your ability to get loans, your ability to travel, your ability to run a business or do anything. That's people like score you it's like that episode of black mirror where everyone was like giving oh, each other yeah. that's that, for real that in that china episode, that episode gave me like oh Stacey, i was like ah. that's the reality people are living in china for real if you are like i don't agree with that one government thing and someone goes boop 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 because you get points for reporting other people beepity boop boop you literally get points for that it's fucked up wow you're like, wow, is that the dystopian future I've always read about? Is, that yeah, I is this like... <laughs> Wait, maybe I should move to China. <laughs> I was seeing if I could find out more about it. Hope to see you back soon. We hope to oh. see you back soon. Go ahead. Yeah, so by 2020, it is intended to standardize the assessment of citizens and businesses' economic and social reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, don't you say this every time. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Has it been implemented yet? Because, like, it doesn't... I remember reading about it and... Give me a tip. Ha-ha! <laughs> five stars and a five dollar tip. So, yeah. Okay. Ray comes over to talk to me after I finish my second session. How are you feeling? That was definitely along the lines of a more typical client. Ray, are you an android? You watched mm -hmm. that one, too? I couldn't bear the thought of you getting two really intense clients in a row. I just wanted to make sure everything went smoothly. That's a lie. I think you, she, everything about Ray is not, it's not right. I don't. <laughs> That's Eliza. <laughs> I think Ray is, I don't think she's a robot. I think she's a person and that scares me more than, than if she was Eliza. Bloop, bloop. If Eliza was an AI and sentient, I'd be less scared than somebody using Eliza as a tool to oppress the masses. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, AI overlord, you know best. Oh, there's a person behind it? No, I don't trust it anymore. I see. Are you getting used to the system now? Why do you trust, why would you trust the AI overlord? Because the thing is, is like the AI, to me, everything always ends in, we decided to exterminate the human race. Because and it you, was for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you would prefer to be exterminated? Well, in my mind, an AI... Would at least be objective about exterminating us? I'm trying to explore my feelings about this in my head. Yeah. So if an AI... Well, no. If it, there's a difference between being an AI and then something not being an AI and being used as a tool to oppress the masses. Mm -hmm. So it's like a group of people using a tool to exploit and manipulate the people in order to maintain power. Yeah. While an AI will do whatever it is that it was created to do. And so it's not really going to have a malicious intent. But it can be even the same if, exact thing. I know that to you, that having the same outcome makes no difference. But to me, the intention of the outcome, I'd be like, yeah, okay. You know, because I just, that's just a but, feeling I have. But it is the intention because it does what it was created to do. Right. So that's, that's the true. intention. Well, I guess let's see if the AI became sentient and then came to its own conclusion. 
that if humans... it decides on its own that we all deserve to die, then I guess we really deserved it. Well, I'm just going to put my faith in the AI because it's clearly smarter than all of us. But if the AI decides that human beings are a virus upon the earth and killing the earth and we all need to die, I accept. But it's still created by humans, so it has human bias. True. We don't, we, you know what it is? We need to create a true, we need to create an AI that then creates its own completely objective AI. We and need, that can kill us, yes, and then it's then, okay. Then it's okay. Yeah. Well, either way, I just want the robots to kill us all. I don't know what it is, I just feel like that's a good idea. Okay, so <laughs> I'm the weird one for wanting for wanting society to collapse, and then okay. we have Mad Max. You, want, you want everybody to die. You want society to collapse so you personally can murder people for but your own people pleasure. But some people are still alive, the ones you that want I let people live. To you want to kill people for your own pleasure. You want everyone I to want die? I want humanity to die for the better of the earth. Or, like in the movie Mother from Netflix... But if most people are dead anyway, that's also for the better, better of the earth. We just get cooler outfits. If everyone dies, or no cool outfits. it can be like in the movie Mother, where the robots kill all the humans and then keep some humans in as I little baby. It. Oh, okay, cover your ears. No. And, <laughs> but I liked, I was like, at the end of the movie Mother, I was like, she was right. That robot lady, correct? Mm-hmm. Um... I feel like it's kind of still feel like it's kind of restrictive. I still feel like it's kind of restrictive. I wish I could interpret what Eliza prompts instead of reading it exactly. Oh, right. So I'm going to have to design more AI or artificial intelligence in order to manipulate you into saying what I want you to say. Yeah, it's like I said, a lot of new proxies run into this. They'll say, if only I could just talk to them for real. If oh. That's a really common feedback point. You're never tempted to break away from the script yourself? Nah. It's just not part of the job, you know? I learned to compartmentalize pretty early on, and that always served me well. People overestimate their own abilities. Have you ever had an interaction with a stranger where he clearly thinks he's getting along with you way better than he actually is? Oh my god, Ray, <laughs> stop! Ray, like, I... Ray keeps showing so much of herself to us wait, wait, in ways... How is this... This is extremely relatable to me. You've never had this happen to you? That's not what I'm talking about, though, because oh. she's supposed to be in the role of somebody in charge of this therapy thing, and she keeps being like, oh, yeah, we keep having these people like this, and we just decided to manipulate the program. I'm going to watch this therapy session. I'm going to watch another one. You ever, like, think, like, it's just, so, like, she, like, freaks me out. Hmm. Sure, hasn't everyone? Yeah. Or, I, oh, I see what you're saying. Which one? I would say sure hasn't everyone together. Sure to hasn't everyone. It's like that. People like to think they can play therapist. It seems easy if all you know is the movie version. You know where you get paid to sit there with your notepad and say, I see, or hmm, every once in a while. The reality is active listening takes a lot of work. It's much easier to just zone out a little bit and let Eliza run things. It's kind of meditative in a way. You just follow the prompts. I know computers telling you what to do has this negative connotation to it, and people who want to criticize us call it dystopian or whatever. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it's almost as if I was like, this seems like everyone just wants to be compliant. It can't, I feel like it is possible for it to be both dystopian and like, here's the thing that is, I feel like, scary about dystopias. It like, is they're that, already here. Well, is that they play off also on like, on like class, and like poverty as like an issue where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we've commoditized this thing, or like people who are wealthy can afford to like survive essentially mm -hmm. and get access to essential care, whereas everybody else just kind of has to make do. And I feel like that's kind of like, you know, what we what you mentioned earlier, where it's like great this can make therapy cheaper and accessible however it doesn't seem optimal yeah but to... but like how do you how do you decide like how do you decide when to like you know like what the solution is that those people don't get therapy you know i don't it's know tough. yeah but it's like any technology it's a tool ray looks thoughtful for a either moment. way you're doing fine so far evelyn Ray's evil. This is a busy day, too. 
We might break our single day record if no one cancels. Is volume especially high right now? <clears throat> it is, yeah. It really rose around the beginning of the year. What happened? We've been in the press a lot lately, so it could be that. Could be it's New Year's resolutions, too. People coming in, wanting to sort their lives out once and for all. This year is the year I'm really going to start addressing my problems. <laughs> I mean, I get that. I do the same thing. Yeah, me too. That's anyway, I told you it was simple, right? Just keep up the good work following those prompts, and you'll be leveling up in no time. What'd you say? She's kind of like comparing it to like gym memberships, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like all the people sign up for the gym in January because they're like, I'm going to do it. This year is the year I'm really going to start addressing my problems. I definitely remember thinking that. I remember thinking that three years in a row.